Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and in our space, I've made some wonderful, wonderful connections. And you've heard me talk about this particular person many times. Her name is Zoe Harkham, Dr. Zoe Harkham. She lives in Wales in the UK. She's a dietitian with a PhD and Zoe does a beautiful thing. She does something called the Monday Letter. And I would urge you guys to subscribe to it. It is absolutely fantastic. Zoe is a scientist who uh, does a lot of statistical work. In fact, she was with Tim Noakes on his trial recently and, and, and helped to exonerate him. Um, but Zoe takes a paper, a scientific paper, and breaks it down and analyzes it from a statistical perspective. And she's absolutely brilliant in what she does. I personally follow her and I learn so much from her. So um, I also recently gave a talk about uh, exercise and um, the role of exercise in healthcare. And so this is a two-part series. The first part, it will be discussing Zoe's paper. And the second part is my talk. So please tune in for both. But Zoe asked the question uh, last year, how much exercise in it is enough? And is there benefit to exercise? And um, in the second part of this, I'll answer my thoughts on this question. But really what Zoe did is she looked at a, uh, a paper that was published. And I'll go through the reference here. Um, the paper is um, by Coleman et al., Dose Response Association of Aerobic and Muscle Strengthening Physical Activity with Mortality, a national cohort study of 416,420 U.S. adults. And it was published in BJSM in August of 2022. So what we're looking at here is the role of exercise. And the way I personally look at physical activity is that mobility is crucial to longevity, both from a mental as well as a physical health perspective. Mobility encompasses four aspects. Mobility is, especially when you're younger, is about strength, muscle strength. It's about endurance or aerobic activity. But mobility is also about flexibility and balance. And of all the meta-analyses that look at longevity, healthy longevity, mobility always ranks statistically significantly up at the top. So um, it is associated, it is heavily tied into uh, long-term health. And I would think that, in my opinion, mobility is as much about mental health as it is about physical health. When you're out doing something physically active, and I use the word physically active, not exercise, it is a wonderful opportunity just to de-stress, to process things that are stressing you, to calm down, to relax. It's a wonderful endorphin activator and also the return of the investment of physical activity, no matter how much, is a wonderful sense of well-being. A sense uh, that builds up in an unconditional way. Self-esteem, self-confidence, self-respect. Another little mind-cleansing moment is my coffee or my tea. Okay, so more specifically, <clears throat> Zoe's paper looked at the health benefits of exercise from a physical perspective. But I really don't want to um, take away from physical activity being primarily a mental health benefit. And I've even put out the, the statement, this following statement. Simply, exercise because you enjoy it. Exercise because you enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, be physically active to the extent you can, but not everybody is an athlete. Some people are thespians, some people are artists, some people are more creative, some people are more spiritual, some people are humanistic. Find your fortress of solitude. It doesn't have to be exercise. Now, let's look at the data. And remember also that to take exercise in isolation as a factor of health is nuts. It's crazy. It's part of epidemiology. And you've heard me rant and rail against epidemiology. And that's pretty much what Zoe does. She rants and raves against epidemiology. So this is an epidemiologic study. And this study looked at about half a million US adults over 18 years to see how much and what type of exercise was associated with low mortality. But you, it's association. It cannot be causal. Diet is as important as exercise. So currently, the World Health Organization recommends that we human beings do about 150 minutes or more of moderate intensive aerobic physical activity 
or 75 minutes of vigorous, intense uh, aerobic activity, about two and a half hours of physical activity a week. And Zoe, the, the next comment that Zoe makes is, as an epidemiologic study, this study suffered the usual flaws. Honesty of self-reporting, association, not causation, relative versus absolute risk, healthy person confounder, all the bullshit that goes toward epidemiology that is so critical of what's happened over the last 30 years in healthcare direction. But in this uh, study, they looked at two key findings. Number one, total aerobic physical activity of three hours per week and one or two sessions of muscle strengthening exercise of weights per week made a significant difference to mortality. So if you did something physically active, something aerobic physically active for three hours per week, and it included one or two sessions of muscle strengthening, there was a significant improvement in mortality. There is minimal evidence, minimal evidence that doing more further reduces mortality. So mortality risk goes down as you start being physically active, up to about three hours a week. And then it flatlines. It doesn't improve significantly. So if you're doing about two and a half to three hours, you're getting maximum benefit. So <clears throat> we talked about the, the World Health Organization and the US government, based on what Coca-Cola says, is even greater than that. And I'm not sure greater is, even, is better. However, and this is important, there is a great deal of literature that associates, again, associates, not causal, that associates regular physical activity to lowering the incidence of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and other non-communicable diseases. And here's the important thing for me, as well as delivering physical, social, and emotional benefits. Physical, social, and emotional benefits, for me, the numbers, the metrics are not that important. The quality of health improvement physically, socially, and emotionally is important to me. Okay. However, one of the things to understand is that exercise as an isolated entity, intentional exercise for the sake of exercise, is a very, very recent phenomenon. Most of our lives as a species, we've been surviving. And we were physically active as part of our daily jobs, as part of our daily survival. And physical activity has declined. But then in promotion and diversion, away from smoking, away from the harm of smoking, the harm of, of sugar, the big tobacco companies and Coca-Cola in particular fostered this notion of exercise as a health trend to offset against the harm of nicotine and sugar, to bury that. That's going to be in the back end talk uh, that follows this one. And it's quite astounding how well they've done that. But before, physical activity was a way of life. Now, our screens, as I watch James here on his, uh, <laughs> on his phone screen, screens have replaced physical activity as a way of life. So we watch other people doing stuff rather than getting out and doing it ourselves. Just a little comment. Um, but physical activity, certainly as we get older, strengthens muscles, decreases sarcopenia or the muscle wasting, improves bone mineral density, reducing osteoporosis, osteopenia, particularly for those of us that are intending to live to 100 years of age. So in this particular study, all-cause mortality, the risk of dying, was statistically significantly decreased by aerobic activity and muscle strength uh, exercise. Um, it was an epidemiologic study and tons of flaws in epidemiology. But generally, the results, compared to those who engaged in no aerobic physical activity, there was a significant reduction in mortality risk in those who did one hour per week of aerobic physical activity. So you see RTC benefit at one hour with peak, with peak benefit at about two and a half to three hours, and then it levels off then there's no benefit after that. There might even be, paradoxically, a slight decrease. Yep. The fittest people, those that are in the gym all the time, may not be quite as healthy as those people doing about three hours a week. Hmm, interesting. And I'll talk more about that in the second part. 
Muscle strength exercise gave additional, on top of aerobic, additional mortality reduction when undertaken at least once a week with the greatest benefits at twice a week. Doing muscle uh, uh, strengthening exercise seven times a week gave no benefit and might actually reduce benefit. Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. But the duration of three hours a week and one to two times a week of muscle strengthening activity gave the best reduction in all-cause mortality. According to this research, the World Health Organization is actually on target with its recommendations. So what do we do? Well, it's moderate exercise. That's a brisk walk. And one of the people, especially for older folks, one of the, one of the people that I really advocate you should look at is Dr. Ben, Dr. Ben Boccio. I, I screw up his last name all the time. It's got a whole bunch of Italian consonants in it that I can't pronounce. But Dr. Ben uh, has a wonderful workout routine that is enjoyable and yet meets every one of these criteria. It's intermittent. It's a couple of times a week. It meets all of these criteria. And I would strongly advocate for Dr. Ben's exercise routine. And, and really the routine equates on average to about nine minutes and uh, between nine minutes and just over 25 minutes a day. A brisk walk for less than half an hour a day. And I bet you your dog will love that. So the risk, the, the relative risk reduction was 27% in this paper. Now, for those of you who say, oh, well, I, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Let's do some math here. We're talking about three hours a week. Okay. There are 168 hours in a week because so often I have a lot of patients who can't find five minutes to do something physically active. And those are the same patients who will always, always, always find five minutes for a meal. Never met a fat person who couldn't find five minutes for a meal, but I've met plenty of fat people who couldn't find five minutes to go outside. Just the reality of our, of our way of thinking. But let's do the math to call you out a little bit, okay? We're asking for three hours a week. There's 168 hours a week. So let's simplify this. Let's look at an eight hours of sleep a night, which is way more than I ever get. That's 56 hours. Let's look at a long work day, 10 hours of work a day, five days a week. That's a 50 hour work week. Less than what I do, but the average hour uh, work week is 40 to 46 hours. So let's use 50 hours of work time a day. Let's use a 14 hour, two hours of eating per day. So let's calculate 14 hours a week. And then let's use 24 hours, two hours a day. Sorry, 14 hours, two hours a day for errands and obligations. So another 14 hours. Okay. And those hours that I call SAD hours, screw around time, 14 hours. If you add up all of those hours and you subtract it from 168, that leaves you 34 hours, 34 hours of time to do three hours of physical activity. There is nobody on the face of this earth that is too busy to find three hours a week to do something physically active to see a 27% reduction in all-cause mortality. How much sad time, screwing around time, do you need in your life? And the amount of screwing around time that you do adds to your carbohydrate addiction risk, adds to your depression, your anxiety, and your inability to manage your emotional needs. So put that into context, folks. Do the math. 168 hours a week. Can you find three hours? Can you find half an hour a day, even 15 minutes twice a day, to do something physically active six days a week? Maybe you can't. Maybe you're that one person who cannot do. How often? Oh, I broke my toe. My ankle hurts. There's a cloud in the sky. <laughs> Ask yourself what your excuse is and validate that excuse to yourself. Even if you don't eat breakfast, you're finding 15 minutes a day. Breakfast for me is a walk with my dog. I am the carb addiction doc. If this has made you think, watch the next episode. 
it will blow your mind. Especially if you're an athlete. Especially if you're an athlete. Watch the next episode. If you want to consult 561-517-0642, leave a comment down below or throw us a buck at our PayPal account. We appreciate you.